Hey guys, welcome back to Vince Bell Custom. So today we're going to kick off the year 2022 with the new work in progress series and that is going to be the Deja Thors from Sideshow Collectibles and we're going to turn this into a Mary Jane from Marvel Comic Books, uh, Spider-Man's wife and I think it's going to be a really cool uh, custom project. I absolutely love the statue. When Sideshow showed it off, I knew right away I was going to get it. I know nothing about the character but it's, you know, usually with me I could care less about the character as long as the sculpt is absolutely phenomenal and this sculpt is phenomenal and I love it. I think they did a great job. Uh, the prototype peanut up is pretty much as close as hell to the factory. The factory did a great job. Uh, the design, the face, the pose and the engineering is absolutely amazing. So I thought right away that this would be like a really great Mary Jane statue. Because uh, I figured this could be like some kind of like chair that's sitting in the corner or by a window and she's just kind of sitting there staring out of it waiting for Spider-Man or if like, you know, if I was a really huge Spider-Man fan, I would actually even design like a window here and put one of the sideshow Spider-Man's back behind it, you know, like he's coming into the window or something. Or even like maybe you just put a window here and put like a comic book page that looks like Spider-Man's coming through the window. I don't know. There's a lot of things you could be done with it. But for right now, all I'm doing is pretty much Mary Jane and stuff. So we're going gonna, we're gonna to break down like what I'm thinking about and how it's going to be done. But before that, I just want to give a shout out to all the Patreons. Uh, basically, this is a item that uh, Patreons get first dibs on because I'm not planning on keeping it. It's for a YouTube series and then I usually sell it off. That goes toward more of uh, projects to do in the future, uh, equipment, video stuff, and all that, everything. So if you want to sign up for my Patreon, uh, it's basically just a support page. Uh, people just support me. Uh, the perks I can really do is people get first dibs, first come, first serve. And basically, uh, whenever I do another character for a live stream, everyone gets to vote on the character off of the statue. So it's kind of like just keep cycling through and support. Uh, so with that being said, let's kind of break down exactly what I thought about when I first saw the statue. So my idea for the base is leave it as is, but we'll change a few things up. I think the chair is fine. I think the chair and I think all the pillows are fine. So my idea is let's repaint the pillows to all the Spider-Man villains. Like this pillow here could be Carnage. This right here could be the colors of uh, Electro. This could be Doc Ock. This one could be Scream. Uh, this one over here could be Scorpion. Uh, you know, so I can utilize all the colors. And I'm thinking maybe what I can do with this piece is sort of utilize this or come up with something a little different on this and make it look like Venom. This is like the ooze of Venom is coming up and she's not realizing it and I can have a hand look like she's going to grab her and then maybe over here have like a, a venom head or something. I get like a th STL file and print out like a venom face and chop it down and make it look like venom smiling here, you know. Uh, one of the other things too I thought about is a lot of people I think have sculpted like Spider-Man teddy bears. I painted up a few for someone who sent me a couple of uh, printouts. Maybe there's some STL files out there where I could print a little bigger one and maybe have a Spider-Man teddy on the base. Uh, the other thing too is, I don't really need to paint the chair. I think that works pretty well with what I'm doing. But I think what I'll do is the circle base is what I'll do is I'll sand it down. I'll get it as flat as I can. And then what I'll do is I'll put balsa wood down and make it look like a wooden floor. So I'm going to have to grind it down a little bit so I can put the wood down. And that'll be a little bit tricky. But I think it would look cool like this is like a really legit wooden floor. And this chair is on like the Spider-Man, you know, like in their uh, apartment. That's kind of my idea, my thought process. Uh, this comes with her, so I don't really need this, so that'll probably end up on eBay to help offset some of the costs. But you can kind of see where I'm going with this item. So I think it should be a really, really cool custom. Now, I did do a Mary Jane a while back off the Sideshow Poison Ivy, uh, but I think with this one it'll look pretty cool. So I'm going to do the jeans, and I'm going to do the white t-shirt again with the Spider-Man symbol. But at least this time... She already has the bare feet and I don't need to really try to work, you know, like, you know, come up with shoes for her. So what I'll do is I'll keep this bracelet on her, but what I'll do is I'll take this long piece off, but I'll leave the toe ring there. Uh, she has another toe ring over here and these bracelets and I'll leave those on there. Because who's to say that Mary Jane doesn't have some bracelets around her ankles? Uh, she's usually barefoot, so it's not the end of the world. We'll kind of utilize the sculpt and go from there. Uh, we'll have ripped jeans around the knees, you know, we'll have ripped jeans up on the thighs, maybe a little toward jeans at the bottom here. And then we'll definitely have low cut jeans and we can see the belly button on her. That's a definite, so we'll definitely go that route. Now as far as her shirt though, that's a little bit of a tricky issue. 
Um, we'll have the shirt above the belly button up around here. It's going to be the white t-shirt. Uh, so I'm going to have to kind of see if I need to work the chest out a little bit better or come up with something. So this is going to be a little bit reworked and YouTube might not like that. So I'll have to figure that out when I'm ready to do it. But as far as her arm goes, you see how her arm comes off like this? Uh, she does have rings here. So what I do is I might take off that ring, leave that like she is married to Spider-Man. This, this bracelet here is, uh, you know, I think it's like kind of attached or glued on. I'm not really sure how this is going. So I can't really paint this with this here. So I might take this off, but leave that bracelet on her. So why not let Mary Jane have a bracelet? It's not a big deal, you know. But I think her t-shirt would come to this edge. So I think I'm going to have to attach the arm, rework the key, and make this kind of go into the t-shirt. So we're going to have to kind of tweak out the t-shirt areas. Uh, same thing over here with this arm. So you can see here, uh, this is the only piece that's removable. So I have to rebuild her wrist area here. And then I think what I'll do is I'll cut it here and I'll make this the t-shirt over that. So this arm will be removable into that. So I got to tweak that out. That's kind of what I need to do there. Now all this jewelry that's on her body, I'll pull all that off and I can utilize that for maybe another statue down the line. So I'm not going to just like throw it away. Uh, as far as her head, the head is removable like so. But the problem is over here, I'm going to have to take all this out. So my theory and my idea what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the head. I'm going to have this attached to her. Um, so I can rebuild the neck and I can take out this jewelry and I can make the t-shirt because usually her t-shirt is kind of ripped and low cut. So I want to have like a low cut t-shirt on her and I'm going to pry off all this hair and I'm going to re-sculpt the hair. So I think as of right now, I haven't gotten that far. Usually I'm going to work from the bottom up. So I'll do the jeans, the t-shirt, the head and everything and the hair will be last. I think what I'll do is I'll have the hair sort of kind of come over this side of the face a little bit and maybe the hair kind of back here like not under the hand but maybe between the fingers and something so the hand is still removable, you know, and have the hair that way. So I have to plan that out a little bit more as I go, but it at least gives you an idea of what I'm looking to do with this item. So as of right now, uh, my next step will be is go into the garage and start prying stuff down. So I think with this one, I'm going to have to be a little bit careful with the U2 algorithm, especially up on the chest area. So... I think uh, what I might need to do is just pretty much strip her down, get all the paint off of her. This way it'll be a little bit better to throw some primer on there and tweak out some stuff. And then from there we can start sculpting up all the elements. I might have to cover the chest until we get up to that with the Aves. I don't know. We'll see. But other than that, I think this is going to be a fun project. And I think this will be definitely a nice item for any Spider-Man fans out there to snag when she's done. Because uh, it's just a really great statue. Uh, hopefully Sideshow does more stuff like this. I know they can't do stuff like this for, you know, DC or Marvel characters because of, you know, that's what they don't want with their characters. But someone like Deja Thoris and stuff, this is a perfect item that stuff like this could be done. So hopefully SciShow keeps producing more items like this. Uh, I really like them. I like that whole idea of the old pinup type of stuff. Deja Thoris, even like Vampirella stuff and anything like that. So it should be a fun series. So hopefully you guys like it. So that's pretty much the explanation and the thought process of what I thought when I first saw it and what I'm going to do. Next step is we're going to go into the garage. We'll start prying out some items. I think with this one I'm going to go and rehash on how I strip down statues with acetone. So I'll get all that set up for the video too. I'll show you guys how I don't always strip my statues down. But I think with this one and like I said with the YouTube algorithm I think I need to. Just so I can get all that paint off of her so it's not really looking like you know. A female like this so I'll get all that off the base though the chairs and the pillowcases I don't need to strip any of that that's fine the way it is and then from there we start chopping out the hand of the gun we pry off the hair uh, we take off all the elements and we just start planning out the sculpt work so with that being said hopefully you guys enjoyed the series it'll go on for however long it goes on whenever I get to it on the side and then uh, it should be a fun uh, project when she's all done so let's get into the garage and let's start tearing this down. Okay, we're in the garage. Uh, excuse the mess on the table. Got to do some cleaning, but that's what the garage is for. So this step is we got to try to get this head out of here without damaging anything major. Usually they go pretty well. Depends on how big this key is because there could be one of two things. One, this key could have like a key coming into here or this key could have a key coming into here, or it could be very just subtle. Uh, I never really know how they uh, set these up, uh, but we're gonna try and pop this out. So usually, if I'm lucky, 
I can put the screwdriver in this place because you need, if you try to do it here, uh, it's not going to do much. Like if you try to jab it in through here, uh, you're not going to really get anything because you'll probably start hitting the key and you have nothing to pry it out with. Uh, so you want to do it in an area down here. Plus the other thing too is you got to be careful that you don't, you know, uh, jam this in here and then scrape it and chop off a nose or an eyelid or something like that. Uh, the other thing too is you just kind of, you want to just start to get a feel on how this could pop out. Like I said, sometimes they're easy, sometimes they're hard. Uh, the other problem too is trying to make sure like if this piece does pop out, it doesn't go flying. Uh, if you're uncomfortable with it, you haven't done anything like this before, you can use like a towel. Uh, I've done this a few times, so hopefully I'll get lucky, but it's kind of... So I heard a little bit of a crack on that one, right? So if anything, I'm just probably breaking little hair pieces, but I don't care about the hair. And there we go. Came right out. Now, I just wanted to make sure I was lucky that it didn't snap or break anything like an ear or anything like that. Just got a little dust, and you can see how this went. So, they had the key at like an angle, and that went in there like so. And somehow they glued the ear pieces. Yeah, well, it's kind of pretty simple. Sometimes they're easy. So you have a key that was in here and you have a key here. So it was a two-prong key system that went in back of the head. Um, and yes, I was correct. Uh, the reason why is because this top piece is actually, as you can see, a separate piece. So now we know how that is working. I will be taking off the magnet and I am actually going to strip down this head. I'm going to put it in an acetone bath. Um, Next chance I get because I don't want to do it today only because I have the heater on in the garage it's pretty cold out and I don't want to open up acetone while I have stuff like that going uh, so this is just kind of like I'm just prepping this up now uh, I might just like take out some of these magnets you know get some of this stuff out of there uh, there is a magnet here but we'll leave that in there um, so I want to take off these little pieces here because these are from what I can tell PVC or something uh, so I don't know how these are glued in because uh, even if I put this in acetone what's going to happen is it's going to just melt out anyway so just kind of getting in here and see how it like stretches when I do that that's because it is like PVC plastic and they did put that in fairly deep I guess you can say doesn't really matter how messy this is because we're going to have a shirt go over it anyway because we're going to sculpt her uh, white t-shirt. I'm not really even pulling the key out. I'm just kind of tearing it apart actually. So. Yeah, so basically what we'll do is we'll grab our pliers. Sorry, wire cutters. Let's see if we can get in there and sort of just pop that out. So you can see a little bit of a square key and they just glued it right in like so. Pretty straightforward. Let's see if we can do the same thing with this one. Sometimes we'll get lucky and it comes right out. Okay. So they had a lot of paint around the bottom of it that really didn't hold in the key as well. So we got that out. So other than that, uh, really not much more to chop up. Um, what I could do is I could kind of sand this down a little bit. I'm gonna try to chop this up. I'll be chopping this up. I'm gonna be slicing off this arm and reworking the key system there. Um, but pretty much we're straightforward. Uh, at least the head came out pretty good. We'll leave the earrings on there because I don't even know if I'm gonna cover up the ears yet. But that is pretty much how I chopped that up. So what I'm gonna do is get this cleaned up and the next chance I get to really strip down the paint, we'll strip down the paint, we'll get it down to bare resin. And then from there, we'll start uh, planning out. We're gonna work our way up. Once I get the arm situated with the magnets, uh, once we get the neck on, we get the head on and everything is looking good, uh, we're gonna work the jeans up to the shirt. So we're gonna work from top to, we're gonna bottom to top.
All right, so I have a little extra age tonight, and uh, this is a good opportunity to finish up the key system on this arm. So I've done this in the past on a few of my videos. This is uh, called uh, key stock. It's square steel uh, zinc plated stuff. You can get like 12 inch uh, rods at like uh, hardware stores. Um, you know, sometimes Home Depot has them in your area, but mine's don't. So my area, uh, a place called Tractor Supply Company has them. Uh, you can order them on eBay or whatever. So which, all you need, need to do is saw it off, find the sand, the tip of it, and then you can get K&S rods that are hollow, square rods, and then you could go like that. So this is basically, first step is put the rod in there nice and straight, make sure it's even. Uh, put some A's, Magiscope, whatever to lock it in place. The next day you cut your uh, K&S rod, put that over like that, and then grab some magnets. So whatever type of magnets you got, uh, or should be fine. What I do is I order all these different sizes off of eBay. You get them from uh, China. You know, you can just order a big batch of them and stuff. So depending on how the arm or piece is in the item. So say the arm is hanging downwards and you want to slide this upwards into the piece to magnetize it, you want some strong magnets. So N52 magnets are what you want. And the more magnets you have, the stronger it stays. If it's going downwards, sometimes you just need a little tiny small magnet. Uh, if it's hanging on the side of an item, you may be stronger. So the reason why I do this for the arms and uh, removable pieces is because it makes life easier for painting, breaking it down, shipping, and all that stuff. So it's some extra steps, but it will make your life easier. Uh, so as you can see right now, that's not going to work if you try to put it in there. So what I like to do is I have a little extra A's from working on some projects. So what I'll do is I'll just take some A's around like this. And then we put this around the rod and the magnets like so and then what we do is we let this cure up for the night and then what happens is we create a key mechanism and I do this a lot of my projects on my customs it just uh instead of sitting there trying to sculpt a key and then push it in the item and then add a magnet and try to do all that stuff like you know I can understand if you want to do that if you're mass producing an item and you're going to make up like 30,000 copies or you know 10,000 copies whatever you know what I'm saying uh, and you want to magnetize it. You can't really do rods like this all the time. So for a one-of-a-kind statue, this makes life easier. So what will happen is we'll let this cure up. And then uh, by tomorrow or whenever the next step I get a chance, what I will do is I will put this piece in there. So let me grab the uh, statue real quick. So this is what I'm trying to explain. So this arm right here is fine for the magnet uh, because this is already created. So as you can see, I sanded this down, and this is already created with a magnet. So I don't really have to go crazy and stuff. Plus, this lines up good with the head and everything. So we don't have to go crazy lining up anything for that. But this arm here uh, is going to be hanging downward. So when this cures up tomorrow, what we do is we put some Magisculpt or A's in here. We squeeze this in. We line it up with these lines that I made, right, or correctly. And then once that cures up, what will happen is I'll pop this out, the rod will come out, but this mechanism will stay in there with the magnets, and then we have a nice, good, clean, removable piece. So that's pretty much what we'll do on that. Now, as you can see, I sort of sanded her down and everything. What's going to happen is her chest is going to get reworked for the t-shirt because this is not set up for a t-shirt giving a taunt look on it. So this chest area is going to be reworked. Um... But as you can see right here, when I took off this ankle, it turns out that this foot is actually glued into this piece. So this leg here, as you can see this little key here, and this leg down here is all a separate piece. So let's kind of pull back on the camera a bit. So this is actually a separate piece here, and then this ankle foot is a separate piece here. So this is why I always tell people, these things are always broken down. They're not casted as one piece and uh, painted. They're all cast up in separate pieces. And then they all get glued in, they get attached, and then they get shipped out. So this is kind of how statues are broken down. Even one that's kind of bare, uh, female, like this, it's like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm probably just going to take some of this extra A's and fill in this area right here and kind of just get this cleaned up. Even though jeans are going to kind of cover this, it'll be good to just sort of, you know, get that filled up right now and secure it in place. Um, and then what's going to happen is, as you can see, I charmeled out the neck and I kind of tweaked out this stuff here. So this head is going to get all fixed. So what I could, I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of fix up the chest a bit. And I'm going to make them a little bit different. Uh, I don't want to probably get in trouble on YouTube and stuff or whatever. And then what's going to happen is this will get re-sculpted for the t-shirt. So I don't want them to be separated and hanging down like this. I want them a little bit more 
up there like the t-shirt is holding them up or whatever. Uh, and then what I'll probably going to do is kind of clean up some of these edges here too, but not that much. Because the jeans are going to cover this anyway, but it's still kind of good to smooth this out and get it cleaned up. So, <clears throat> we're still uh, kind of tweaking out some stuff. So, I think the next step what I'll do is, with this little Aves here, I'm going to clean this up. I'm going to clean up the ankle. And then uh, what I'll do is next time I get into the garage, I'm going to kind of chop this up and clean this up. And we'll re-sculpt the chest. And then we'll start planning out some other stuff as we go. So we're still in the prep phase. I'm still planning things out, tweaking some stuff here and there. But uh, let's move along pretty well. So let's go ahead, let's fill this stuff up, and then uh, try to get to the next step in a day or two. Okay, it's the next day and I just wanted to show you how this worked out. So by putting that on there, this piece comes off, right? So you know how you have a key mechanism. See how it just kind of clicks in there in place? Sometimes these square, uh, you know, key stock rods are a little bit, uh, maybe too big sometimes for this or sometimes they're too small. Um, you know, because maybe, like, maybe the metal piece won't be able to get in there and it's too tight. So you see how it's kind of like shiny and buffed out. I use my uh, Dremel sanding buffing tool. And I sort of kind of grinded down some of the edges because uh, it was a little too tight where it wasn't clicking like this. But now that we got the click, everything's working good. So I'm going to do this off camera because it's really pretty much straightforward. Uh, I'm going to mix up some Magic Sculpt or A's or whatever I pull out of the uh, drawer. I'll put that in there. I'll line this up with that marker there. And I'll try and tape this and keep this on the side for a while and go from there. Now... The reason why I try to do it with uh, Magic Sculpt or Aves is because if you put glue in there and somehow you put too much in there because sometimes it's hard to judge how much to put in there. Uh, if you put too little in there and then you try to s work it later, you just rip it back out. If you put too much glue in there and it seeps around, then it gets into here and it gets all around in there and then you lock this piece in place and it becomes more of a mess. So I like to play it safe, so I'm just going to mix up probably some Magic Sculpt because that stuff kind of cures up a little bit faster. Uh, what I'll do is I'll put this on here like that and go from there. Now, if you're really uh, concerned, sometimes you could put just a dab of glue, just a very tiny dab of glue, when you put the Magic Sculpt in there and let it sit. And then when you pop it off, it should come off with no problem. But uh, other times, uh, what I'll do is I'll just wrap tape around the area, some masking tape, and just let it sit. And probably, uh, it's early in the morning now, so probably after lunch, I'll probably pop this out and make sure everything's lining up pretty well. Um, you want to make sure that the inside is as clean as possible, so there's no dust in there from drumbling stuff out. Uh, as you can see, this little piece right here has kind of got to get pried out. This is from the original key that was in there. See that little piece that came out like that? So, stuff like that you want to make sure is not clogging up or causing any issues. Make sure there's no dust. Um, any kind of grinding or little line work and stuff will help make something grab. If it's a perfectly crate, perfectly smooth circle that you put in there, sometimes that causes an issue where you try to pop this out later and it just slides right out if it's not cured yet. So grinding in there, a little bit like grinding this way and that way to make sure everything locks into place works well. Uh, and then once that's done, uh, this will have a nice key piece and then what I can do is sand up some more, grind out the chest a little bit more, start sanding this up because this stuff cured, this stuff cured as well. Uh, and get it all pretty much prepped up for some sculpt work, uh, get the head on there, get all about some stuff around there, and then we can start, you know, planning out some more. So let me go ahead and get this done, and we'll come back on the next step. So uh, I had a chance to go into the garage and dremel some of this out So and sand. So I sanded down the ankle here, got that all cleaned up. 
sand around the waistline a little bit more, just clean this up. Even though this is going to be covered with jeans, still like to make it at least a little bit cleaner. Uh, so with her chest and her neck, as you can see, I drummed out a lot of neck. I'm not really going to worry too much about the neck right now. I um, want to put the head on after I get the chest done. So because she doesn't have a t-shirt on, her chest is split apart. So what I want to do is I want to close it up more because when I show the cleavage area on the chest, uh, I want to have the t-shirt closing them up. So what I did is I drummled out around the edges here. I drummled out the right edges here. And I'm going to build in around here more. Uh, and then after that, I'll probably shape it in the garage and stuff. So I'm not really worried too much if the bottom parts of her chest is uh, like perfect. Because when I start doing the t-shirt work around it, all that's going to get changed. It's the cleavage area here that I need to be worked out. Now I'm not going to try to build them out too much. I don't want them too big. But... I'm not going to try to make them too small either. Uh, so I just got to tweak it a little bit here and there. So what I like to do is a lot lately what I've been doing is I use Fix-It Sculpt. Uh, Fix-It Sculpt I was using in the past just for hair. Uh, but then one day what happened was uh, I was working on a project and I had a little bit of Fix-It Sculpt left on the, uh, the wax paper. And I was mixing up some regular A's which is just regular A's epoxy sculpt. And what I did is I mixed that together with that, and I got this really perfect consistency of what I like now. So, what I've been doing is the Fix-It Sculpt and the regular Epoxy Sculpt, I've sort of been mixing together a lot, doing a lot more testing. Uh, and I think almost like a ratio of 50% of this and 50% of this. So it's like 25% of this container, 25% of this, 25 of that, 25 of that, mix it all together. Has been giving me like this perfect mixture, which I like a lot more. So... The reason why you're not seeing heavy duty red on a lot of my sculpts or pure like uh, natural color white anymore is because it's kind of like this pinkish color. So I'm kind of mixing these together. So I'm not saying that uh, I'm always going to do this. Uh, sometimes a lot of stuff if I'm just filling up an item or I'm kind of redoing something or I don't really need to worry about uh, mixture just kind of fill it in. I'll just re mix up my uh, epoxy sculpt together and just kind of fill it in. But whenever I want to do some detailing like this now... Uh, I like mixing these two together uh, because the Fix-It Sculpt is a little bit more durable. It doesn't really sag as much as this, but kind of mixing these together, you get that middle point. So uh, as an example, if this is mixed together and you hold it straight out, it sort of sags down real fast. Uh, if you hold, if you mix this together and you hold it out, it sort of sags, but not as much. But now if you mix these all together, you get that little bit where it sort of sags, but doesn't. So... It's kind of tricky. You really got to get in there and uh, kind of mess with it and stuff like that. So I'm just going to go in there and clean this off a little bit. I'm going to get this mixed up and then we're going to build out this chest. Okay, so as you can see, it's pretty much equal amounts. Yeah, this is a little bit more than this, but still, this is equal to this, this is equal to this, and then when you mix them together, it's fine. Uh, so this is my safety solvent. This is what I use a lot during my stuff. So what I do is I just take all this and just mix it together. Uh, I dip my finger in the safety solvent uh, just to kind of soften this stuff up. Uh, I do keep my uh, epoxy sculpts in the refrigerator. At least this new one I just opened up. I uh, try to a lot. To fix it, I tend not to as much. Uh, but sometimes I do. If I think I'm not going to use the stuff for maybe a day or two, I'll put it back in the fridge. The fridge just keeps it fresher longer. Uh, if you keep it outside drying up all day long in like a hot area or something, you'll run into issues with it not being as super soft when you're working on it. So as you can start to see, I'm getting like a gummy feel to it uh, with the safety solvent. And the more safety solvent you mix into it, the softer and softer it's going to get. We don't want it to be too soft, what I'm working on right now. Uh, if I was going to do hair, I would really soften it up a lot more. But you just want to really, you want to really make sure you mix it up nice and well. The reason I'm using gloves to mix it up is because it gets all over your hands by doing this. Uh, but I usually take the gloves off when I really do uh, the sculpting work because it's just easier. Um, a lot of people ask me why do I use the red. The reason why I use red is because I find that if you get it on your fingers and you accidentally like touch it on the statue or if it's sticking here on this or it's on your tools, I can see it better. And the only reason why I got the red in the beginning a while back is because it was on sale from the Ave site. And I like to buy directly from Ave's. So it's just better for me to see what I'm doing. Especially when I paint my items with primer, I use gray primer. So when I sculpt the red, this pinkish red on top of that, I can see what I'm doing. 
Uh, plus, you know, if you get if you stand in the garage and you get a lot of dust around, you'll see the pink dust. The natural color works okay, but I just find the red works the best. They have a lot of other colors there too. You know, they have orange, yellows, blues, uh, whites, uh, blacks, and stuff like that. I just find that the red just kind of fits for what I do. Uh, I would suggest staying away from the super white because it seems like they put a lot of like white like paint in there and it gets really gunky and nasty. Uh, the black one seems to do the same thing. They put a lot of like ink in there. Um, and I've and the natural color, which is kind of like just like the greenish color, it's hard for me to see what I'm doing. I think with the red dye in there for some reason and mixing it like this, it just becomes really good. It's nice and clean. I can see what I'm doing and I don't have any issues. So like I said, if I was rolling this out on my hands, I would have all that stuff on my hand so you can see where it is on the glove, you know. So that's kind of why I like to use the gloves to mix it up. But we're nice and soft. We're nice and gummy. As I'm pulling it apart, it's not really like, pull, like, like here it's kind of like gr grainy. But the majority of it's nice and soft going. So that's why I use the safety solvent to soften it up. Alright, so I'm just going to kick on some music. And we'll just kind of do the fast thing of me rebuilding the chest. Let that sit. We'll start cleaning it up. And then I have to plan out, do I attach the head now? Do I do the jeans first and then do the head? Or I got to kind of plan out my next steps. But I'm just trying to get the majority of stuff done now. Um, you know, because uh, especially when I start building the t-shirt and stuff. I don't know. So we'll see what it is. Let me just focus on the chest now and we'll go from there. I went ahead and I worked on the chest, as you can see. Uh, I'm actually pretty happy with the way it came out. Uh, sometimes I usually have to do this like two or three times because I mess it up, but I actually like the way this lined up pretty well. Uh, these areas up over here are probably where I'll use some putty once it cures up and I do some sanding. Uh, because if I try to throw some eaves on there now, I find that the way I sculpted this now, if I try and throw more eaves onto it, what happens is it doesn't line up correctly. So sometimes you got to try to line it up as perfectly. As you saw, I mix up just a much for this side and just much for this side and it equaled it out. I find that if you have an item that you kind of built on, like say you already built on this item and it's sculpted, and then you try to add a little bit more with eaves on there, and then you try to kind of start smushing it and putting it around, you get kind of like that uneven stuff because you're pushing this to try to line up to this and it doesn't kind of line up correctly. So this time it actually worked out well when I got just enough. Now, they may seem sort of large right now, but I'm going to sand these down and kind of take it down a little bit. And then when I add the shirt there, depending on how I build a shirt, I might make it so it looks like the shirt is kind of tight around there and it kind of bubbles up a little bit around the shirt. Uh, when I do that little uh, curve area there, but I'm not really sure about that yet. We'll get to it later. Uh, but right now, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, it is uh, looking at it far away. It, it, it seems to be really in scale with her. It's a little bit on the larger side, like I said, right now. But that's okay. You know, we can always have fun with that. Uh, but right now, it looks good. I'm gonna let it kind of cure up. 
Uh, I think I just got one little spot right here. Even though this shirt's going to kind of cover this area, I always like to try to make sure everything looks good all around. But other than that, I'm liking where it's at. But like I said, I'm going to sand this down a little bit, kind of tone it down, get around the edges and stuff, and kind of clean it up and stuff like that. And then once I add the shirt on, things will definitely change and look different. Um, but right now, I'm pretty happy with it. So that's kind of how we built out the chest. Uh, we'll let this cure up and then uh, we'll figure out what I'm going to do with the next step to another day. Okay, so before I close up shop tonight, uh, it's getting kind of late. I want to make sure this is secured for tomorrow so I can do a little sculpt work uh, in case I have extra aves. Uh, so I have to be very careful with this hand here. If you attach the head and you're not careful, what happens is uh, if you're not planning this out correctly uh, and you put the head on this way and then when you try to put the hand after it's cured, it doesn't go on correctly and you can snap a finger. So I got to make sure I do this correctly. Uh, so I do have the hollow part here already. I'm going to cut up a rod. There's a part over here that's hollow in here. Uh, so what I do is I have a uh, magic sculpt. The magic sculpt is like Aves, except it comes from a complete sculptor. And I find that this stuff is a lot harder to sculpt with. But when it cures, it seems to be a little bit stronger than Aves in certain ways. Um, you can use Aves in here with a metal rod and do it if you have the Aves and that's all you have. But I use the magic sculpt for like building up, think of like a skeleton. So her neck, you know, bone going to the spinal cord and all that will be in there with the magiscope. And that'll cure up tonight. So then tomorrow, everything will be cured up and it'll be holding really well, it won't be wobbling on me. Even if I put glue in there tonight and I hit it with Instaset, you can still kind of snap it and it could come off. So I'd rather have this head secured when I do the neck. So I'm gonna mix up some magiscope. We'll put the rod in there, we'll get her secured with a little bit of glue. Uh, we'll make sure that this hand is uh, lining up correctly, and then we'll go from there. Now, I'm not sure yet if I'm going to sculpt the hair going through the uh, fingers, and then maybe make this arm attached, or if I'm going to do the hair over here closing this eye. So I'm not really sure yet about the hair yet. I really just want to get the anatomy done. I want to get all the uh, removable parts done and stuff like that. So after we get this neck done and we get all this done, we have to work out her arm over here with the hand. And then from there, <clears throat> we'll pretty much have a base coat and a base thing of the figure ready to go to start doing all the detailing work. So let me get this mixed up. We'll get this attached and we'll go from there. All right, so the best way I find to do this just kind of helps me out is grab any uh, tool you got. Take this and just kind of shove that in there like so. I already have a rod cut. Now you always want to test what you're doing because if you uh, just start throwing some uh, E's in there and you're not careful, you realize that it's not hitting. So you can see, uh, got to put a little bit more in there. So I dremeled that a lot. Yeah, we're looking good. So you can kind of see how it squeezed up the top in there. So next step is we take this. And we throw some in here like so. Now you can use any kind of metal rod you want. I like using brass only because brass wise, let me take some of this out because brass doesn't magnetize. Uh, it'll hold this stuff a little bit better. You don't have to really like, if you put enough magnesculpt in here in Aves or whatever, you really don't need to, and you let it cure, it should be on there pretty well, but I used to like the rods just in case there's sort of an issue. So let's just kind of put that on there to make sure things are looking good. We'll pull it apart. I always like to double check. Don't I don't like to just put some A's in there and think that, or man just go saying, okay, that's enough. Because uh, sometimes you don't put enough, sometimes you do. Now the other step is we have our glue, right? So I'm going to be very crazy with the glue, it doesn't matter. Because any glue that comes up around the neck, I can just dremel out tomorrow and then sculpt over with the uh, eaves. And if you really want to be careful, you can kind of just get something in the inside a little bit more. I use the gel glue because it is just much easier. So the next step is we take the head and 
and we put that on there like so. Take our hand, make sure we're lining up correctly. So now there's a bunch of glue all around the edges. So if you have a tool, especially you have these like little things, you get these off of uh, everywhere. You can kind of just wipe some of this glue away. It's not the end of the world if it's squeezed out a little bit because the Dremel will take it right out. Make sure the head is down. Make sure we're looking good all around. You can see some of this uh, magiscope squeeze to the back. And then we have our Insta set, which I have a little squeeze tool and basically lining up. Just kind of Insta set it in. And I'll let that sit for tonight. Uh, let that really cure up by tomorrow. There is a little bit of bleeding over here, but that glue is already kind of caked up and already insta set it. It's done. But at least the head is on now and everything's looking good. So tomorrow, what I could do is I go in the garage and I could just drummel that out real quick. Uh, drummel this out a little bit here if there's any kind of squeeze. And then I can start working out her neck. And once her neck is worked out, uh, I'll move on to this arm. We're going to take out the gun and all that stuff tomorrow. If I find some time, make sure we're lining up good. Everything's lining up good. We're looking good. And then after that, uh, we can do some priming work on the upper body area. Uh, and make sure there's no uh, mess ups and stuff. Uh, as you can see, I kind of fixed up the top areas here. I mean, this stuff's going to get covered with a shirt, but only to a point. Because uh, we're going to see some of the cleavage, so I got to make sure that this is lining up correctly. But other than that, we're looking good. Yeah, so we'll let this sit for tonight. We'll come back tomorrow, and hopefully we can start building out the neck. So I had a chance to get in the garage and what I did is I took out the magnet here, I took out the magnet here and I took out the gun. Uh, I'm still not sure if I'm going to swap out the hand or if I'm going to utilize this hand with something else. I kind of haven't gotten that far yet. For right now what I want to focus on is getting this arm attached and then cleaning this up and getting this part off because it's going to be a bare arm. Uh, so I got some magiscope here. All I'm going to really do is pretty much probably throw in a rod or something, throw in the magiscope, hit this with some glue and let it set up. And then what I'll do is I'll grind this out and then I'll re-sculpt this area for the wrist and all that and get that cleaned up. Uh, I didn't really grind this down yet because I wanted to get this attached first. Because uh, if I start screwing up this key and I mess up and then I try to put the arm on like kind of like a different weird angle, I don't want to do that. Uh, so I just want to go ahead and get this uh, attached. So 
Let me uh, pretty much get a rod cut up and then we'll come back. So I had a chance to get into the garage the other day and uh, kind of really clean this up. I got some more cleaning to do, but I'm not really worried about certain areas because the shirt's going to kind of cover this anyway. Uh, you know, and then we got the jeans to go on her waist area. But I still wanted to get a lot of it cleaned up just in case. You don't want to uh, say, okay, I'll, I'll clean that up later once I start doing the shirt. It's better to actually get everything as clean as possible then do the shirt because then if you start putting the shirt on and you gotta get into here and if you try sanding that down you might sand some of the shirt and it gets kind of messy so I always try to get the bare figure when I do my stuff uh, done first but all in all I'm really happy this hand goes in pretty well we're gonna keep that magnet of course uh, I just gotta kind of prime this up and clean this up when I get a chance it's just been really cold weather lately so I haven't had a chance to really work on it uh, a little bit messy behind the neck here, but that's going to get covered up with the shirt once we get that done. I'm not worried about this back of the head like this because we're going to have all that hair coming down. Uh, we're going to keep the bracelet and the rings, of course. Um, you know, I just kind of went around some of these areas here and I cleaned up some of this stuff. There's still a little bit more to go. Uh, underneath here, it's a little bit messy, but the shirt's going to cover this area anyway with wrinkles. So I'm not saying, okay, this has to be perfect. Uh, I just like to make sure that all the shape is done good because this way when we put the shirt on, it'll work. Now this arm here, I did have a chance to get in the garage and sand this down. So as you can see, I got it really nice and smooth. I have to hit it with primer yet to really make sure everything is uniform because it seems a little bit messy here still. But I pretty much got that shape going for the arm. Now it goes in pretty well with the magnet. It stays in pretty well. You just got to be a little bit careful over here. So I think our plan is... We're going to work with the jeans first next video. Next video, we're going to focus on the jeans. I want to make sure I have rips here, but I'll have her all primed up, ready to go. And then uh, basically, we'll start using our blue pencil. We'll mark everything. We'll get a better idea of what we're doing. We're going to focus on the jeans. Once the jeans are done and that's all good, the next video after that, we'll focus on the shirt. We'll kind of get the shirt going. We'll get everything lined up. You know, we'll make sure that the arms are removable with the shirt and go from there. And then once the shirt and jeans are done, that's when we're going to focus on the hair. Hair is going to be the hardest part probably of the whole project because, uh, you know, you have a removable part here. So trying to put in the hair and then doing this stuff, if you have the wet aves and you put it on there, it starts gunking up your fingers. So we got to, I got to figure out how I'm going to do this and stuff because I really want to make sure that this arm goes into the hair but is removable. So this is going to be a little bit tricky. But once we get jeans, shirt, hair done, I can start fine-tuning details like what am I going to put in this hand? Uh, do I want to keep this hand? Do I want to get a separate hand? Maybe print it out and cast it up? You know, uh, I've got to figure something out here. So while I'm working on this stuff, I'll keep this in the in back of my mind. And pretty much once we get her all done and she's ready to go, that's when we'll focus on the base and try to figure out what we're going to do down here. Because like I said, I think I want to do a wooden floor uh, like she's in an apartment building. Um, but I want to keep the base because this thing is so heavy, it's connected to the base and trying to put this on a block of wood or something like that might be a little bit risky. Uh, so I want to keep this base, but what I'll have to do is I'll have to grind it down and then I could put wooden planks down or something like that. So we'll see afterwards. Hopefully by the time she's uh, pretty much done, we'll pretty much be in the springtime where I could actually get outside one day and not freeze my ass off and grind the top of this base down and see. Or... 
if it's better to just maybe uh, make a square resin base or something. But I think uh, keeping the circle is fine because uh, I want to make sure this is kind of, you know, not too big and stuff for like a display case. I really want to make sure it's kind of cut down. All right, so I rambled on long enough, but that's kind of where we're at. So next video when we come back, we're going to focus on the jeans. I think what I need to do is set aside a personal day, like on a Saturday, wake up, make sure it's just kind of like one of these uh, relaxing days for me, and I can just sit down and kind of work on the jeans that day and stuff. So it's going to be a little bit tricky. The one last thing, though, is I noticed that she kind of slides a little bit, like the casting or something is a little bit off. But after some thought, this is actually good. I'm glad that she kind of pushes away from the pillows. Because once I do the shirt and I do the jeans here, she should probably lock in perfect. So by having her super tight across these pillows here, but loose over here, it's a kind of a little bit tricky. Uh, but I think the way this is working now, it's going to come together pretty well. So that's kind of where we're at right now. Uh, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully you guys will like this project when it's all said and done. Uh, and hopefully when I get a chance, maybe in a month or so, I get up the next video. Uh, we'll have the jeans worked out and should start coming together. So thanks for watching. Appreciate it. And we'll be back with some more videos.